welcome. I'm Andy Lee. This is the Bite of Bread. Come on in. Come to my kitchen. Come sit around my table. There is plenty of room here. We'd love to have you join us. What we do is we take the scripture, we take one bite at a time, one verse at a time, and dig underneath our translation, dig underneath into the context so we can glean the most we can out of the verses. Hey, Shelly Murphy, good morning. Good to see y'all. Hey, I still have... Venus, good morning. I still have my readers. I have not found my glasses. They are totally M-I-A, missing in action. So I'm thankful for these and thankful I don't have to drive anywhere in the dark anytime soon. Well, maybe tonight, but I'll be okay. Not very far. So anyway, good morning, Marie. Good morning, Debbie. Good to see y'all this morning. Thank you, Deb. Love you, Deb Warren. Good morning, Teresa. Good to see you today, too. Hey, do you have your Bibles open? Are you ready? Are you ready for Psalm 63? Ready to dig a little bit more into that Psalm? Let's pray while people are, are getting on with us. I can have my coffee in my um, Massachusetts mug, Cape Cod mug, one of my favorite mugs. Hope you have your coffee. So I'm going to take a sip. And hope I don't choke on it. I'm so bad about choking on stuff. Anyway, and, and let's pray us up. Hey, Penny, good morning. Good to see you. Y'all, I've been out for a walk already. Walk, walk run, walk is what I call it, jog. This morning, it's a beautiful day here. It's kind of getting cloudy again. But let me hold your hands and pray you up. And get us started. Hey, Chrissy Cunningham, thank you for joining today. I'm praying this up. Father, we love you and praise you. Thank you. Thank you for the blessing of coming together as believers of Jesus um, with hope. Lord, we come to you. We read your word. We thank you for the love letter that you've given us. God, thank you for this heart of David who loved you and had this relationship with you um, and who was just an example of praising you even in those hard times and those desert places. God, speak to us today. It's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, amen, amen. Here we go. Are y'all ready? We have one little bitty verse that we are studying today. Just one verse in Psalm 63, verse 2. But I have to read the first verse because it goes in together. Yummy, good morning. So Psalm 63, verse 1 is what we studied yesterday. Oh God, Elohim, we learned was that word. Elohim, you are my God, my El, my strength. Earnestly, which we learn meant early, I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So we talked about him, about Jesus being the living water yesterday. Then verse 2, in my NIV, it is translated like this. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. I have seen you in the sanctuary and have beheld your power and your glory. That is how the NIV translates that verse. That is the verse we're going to take today and just chew on and, and dig into it and see how we apply that to us and see what's going on here. So it's interesting that other translations, rather than saying, I have seen, they connect verse 2 2 verse 1 where he's saying I long I thirst for you and then there's a semicolon and I desire to see you in the sanctuary let me see how um, another translation I think it was King James version uh, if you have the U version Bible it's really cool You're, if you've got that app 
You can look up all the different translations and see how they have translated the verses, and they'll be different. Lisa Howard, good morning. Heather, good morning. Miss Ellen, good to see you today. Y'all, we're still in Psalm 63. We're in verse 2, and I was just talking about the different ways it's been translated. In the NIV, it is, I have seen you in the sanctuary. In the King James Version, it's, it's like a semicolon, and he still longs to see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen you in the sanctuary. So in the King James Version and some of the other versions, um, it's, it's like he's still saying, I am thirsty for you, I am longing for you, and I'm longing to see you again, just as I've seen you before in the sanctuary. Paul says, hi, hey, Paul, good to see you. I miss you guys, I miss you. You need to come. Come to the beach. Come on down to the south. Anyway, good to see you. So Paul and Lisa Howard are sweet military friends who we became good friends in Germany, which is so cool. We love being in Germany. So back to Psalm 63, 1 and 2. So I believe that um, the King James Version uh, has this right, that he's continuing on saying, I, I long for you, I thirst for you, I want to see you again like I've seen you before. This is really interesting. Now, the NET is the New English Translation. It is only on the computer. You can only get it on the computer. You can get it through the YouVersion app, but you're not going to be able to buy that Bible. But what's so cool about that is you can click on the, a little symbol they have, and it gives you information about a word or why they translated it a certain way. And the NET says, yes, in the sanctuary I have seen you. And he says it's a Hebrew participle. I'm sorry, this is going to get a little heavy, but just keep on going with me. That is used here, the, the, the Hebrew word is ken, K-E-N, like Ken and Barbie. Anyway, to stress the following affirmation. So, yes, I have seen you and I will see you again is really what he's saying. Um, it's the perfect verb form is understood here of referring to a past experience which the psalmist desires to be repeated. But another way to read it is it indicates his um, certitude that he will again stand in the presence of of God. So, okay, think about this. Now, we've talked about this context. David is in the desert. He's in En Gedi. He's running from Saul. He's running for his life. He has been misunderstood. He's been um, blasphemed, really, by Saul. Um, and so, Saul, is, Saul used to be this king that he looked up to. His son, Jonathan, is David's best friend. And so he's been betrayed, not by Jonathan, but by Saul, by this man who used to be someone he looked up to, someone he, he was friends with in a, in a sense. And so now he's running from him. And so when he's in this desert place, desperate, desperate for God, can I just tell you, if you are in the desert right now, if you are in this desperate place for God, it's a good place to be. You see how David's, David, David keeps on praising him. He keeps on saying, I have seen you and I will see you again. I long for you. I will see you again. And as we keep on reading this this week, we're going to see this amazing love he has and respect and worship he has for God and how this just gets him through this really hard, dry weary, lonely place in the desert. And so he says, I have seen you, or I will see you again in this sanctuary as I've seen your power and your glory before. So there's another translation that I found on the U, um, the U version Bible, and it's the Orthodox Jewish Bible. And it's really interesting a lot of times they'll use a Hebrew word um, or a New Testament, and it even has the New Testament, and they'll use a Greek word, and, and I totally don't know what they're talking about. 
But so, the, but just I just want to encourage you if you have the YouVersion Bible app to to click on the Orthodox Jewish Bible and read some of the scripture out of that because it's just really interesting. I, I love it. So the Orthodox Jewish Bible. Hi, Diana Flagel. Good to see you this morning. Says, oh, listen. We learned Elohim yesterday, right? Oh, Elohim, thou art El, my strength, my God, right? Early, they use the word early. I will seek thee, my my um, my soul. They use the Hebrew nefresh. Um, thirst for you, my 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 flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. And then it says, this is how. Verse 2 is translated, to see thy, so it continues, to see your might, to see your might and power and your glory as I have beheld you in the holy place. You know where the holy place was? You know where the sanctuary was for them? Now back then, this is on, this is before the cross. We live on the other side of the cross. So before the cross, hey, Bev Francis, good to see you, Bev. I'm glad you're with us. So before the cross, there was no Holy Spirit. So in, well, there was a Holy Spirit. Don't don't. There was a Holy Spirit. He was around. He was still working, but he hadn't been given to all of us who believe yet. And so his presence wasn't with everybody yet. So in order to see God, in order to be in the presence of God. They had the temple, and they had the sacrifices, and they had the holy place, and then they had the holy of holies, and that's where the Ark of the Covenant was in the atonement seat, and that's where the priest would go, and he would go in with the rope and the bells tied around his ankle just in case. He, he was a sinner, and he died in the presence of God, and they had they would drag him out. But once a year, he would go into that holy of holy, the holy, holy place in the presence of God. That was the only way to get there. When Jesus died and he was on the cross, do you remember, do you remember what happened? There was an earthquake, and everything, everything, you know, the, the rocks started moving around, and it says that the that what happened, the curtain from the holy, holy place, the curtain tore in half. And that represented that we could walk on in and we could now be in the presence of God. Hey, Deb, good morning. Good to see you. Kelly Bernard, thanks for joining us. We're in Psalm 63, 2, and we're talking about being in the presence of God and how David is longing but not only longing to be in the presence of God, he is saying, I will, dang it, I will see you again. I will be in your presence once more. So the Holy of Holies represented being in God's presence, personal experience with God that David had had. Now, we don't, you know, there are many questions about that because he wasn't a priest. He hadn't gone in the Holy of Holies, but perhaps just worshiping in the temple. He had seen the glory of God, just this radiance, this presence of God. He had experienced that. And he knows, he's going to see it again. Job says the same thing. He uses the same words. Um, in Job 19.27, and we talked about Job as uh, when we talked about the Redeemer last week, and he says, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that was like verse 26. In verse 27, Job 19.27, if you want to write this down and look at it later, says, I myself will see him. I myself will see him. And in rabbinical literature, um, the word glory, the word glory was a symbol of God's personal presence. So when he says, I've seen your glory, he's saying, I have been in the personal presence of God and I will do it again. I will see God. Job is saying, that's what David's saying, Job is saying, I will even though all of this bad stuff is happening to me and all of you friends of mine are telling me I'm a sinner and a bad person, I know 
that I, my Redeemer lives and I am going to stand in the presence of God in his glory one day. I know. Can y'all just say amen with me? I know. I know. I will. Well, y'all, we live on the other side of the cross. We live on the other side where Jesus had promised. He said, I'm going to leave because, and I have to leave. And I have to leave because I'm going to send the Comforter. I'm going to send the Counselor. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit for everyone to have. And 50 days after Passover, in the celebration of Pentecost, if you go to Acts chapter 1 and 2, we read about the Holy Spirit coming and falling on everybody around there. And the Holy Spirit changed everything everything because now we don't have to go to a temple to be in the presence of God. God is with in us. His glory is in us. I'm doing a Bible study on Romans and I've been digging and working on my study. And Romans 5:12, I just I've been was studying this for the lesson I've been working on this week. Go with me to Romans 5:12. So Romans 5:12 says, well, let me start with verse 1, Romans 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, in order, in other words, we, we have been made right. We have been, it's, it's good. We've been justified through faith, and that word faith is trusting by trusting God, by trusting Jesus Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through, through whom we have gained access. Okay, that it's important that access to the Father, access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. Did you know you stand in grace? We stand in grace because of what Jesus has done. We've been justified by faith and trusting, not by anything that we have done. We can't be good enough. We can't check off enough of the boxes to be good enough. It's just not in us. But Christ took that punishment and he took the wrath. Now through trusting that, by trusting that God wants us and he's chosen us, that we just step into that grace in which we now stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We rejoice in that hope. You know, I really believe that's what David was doing in Psalm 63 too. He was like, I am in this bad place. It is dry. It is hot. It is lonely. It's not fair, but I am longing. What was he longing for? He wasn't longing even for uh, to, to be okay. He wasn't longing to be the king. He was longing for God. He was longing for the presence of God. And he said, I will see you. I will see your glory as I've seen it before. I, he knew beyond knowing. Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you will stand in the presence of the glory of God one day? Can I just get an amen, a hallelujah, glory, whatever comes out of your fingers to type. If you know, beyond knowing, hey, Lisa Morgan, good to see you, Lisa Morgan Moore. If you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that yes, one day we are going to not just experience the spirit, but we will be standing in the presence of the glory of God. Just you know what? If you don't chew on anything else today, I hope you just meditate on that. Think about that. Think about that um, promise that we have. We have it because of Jesus. We have it because of what he's done. Romans 5, I'm going to read it again. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, and that that we've done has justified us, only our trusting in God, we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, we have peace with him, we're made right with him, through whom we have gained access by faith, by trusting into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope 
and the glory of God. What are you rejoicing in today? Let's just rejoice in that hope. And it's, it's like an assured hope. When rejoice in that assured hope that one day we will stand in the presence of God. Well, I want to finish up today with Jesus calling for today. So let me put on my readers. I look like an old lady as I read to you today. What is today? Today is the 25th, right? Make me your focal point as you move through this day. Just as a spinning ballerina must keep returning her eyes to a given point to maintain her balance. And how many of us are spinning around today doing stuff? So you must keep returning to focus to me. Your focus to me. Circumstances are in flux and the world seems to be whirling around you. The only way to keep your balance is to fix your eyes on me. The one who never changes. If you gaze too long at your circumstances, you will become dizzy and confused. Oh, isn't that true? If you look too much at your problems for too long, you just become dizzy and confused. Look to me, refreshing yourself in my presence, and your steps will be steady and sure. My friends, yes, Romans 12, 12, awesome, awesome. Lisa's holding on to that. It's... That's awesome. Maybe I should read that right quick before we close. Romans 12, 12. One of my favorite scriptures to Lisa. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Amen and amen. My friends, let me hold your hand. Let me pray you up so that we can stay focused on the one who loves you more than anything else who's gone to such great lengths that we could stand in his presence and give us such hope and assurance that we will see the glory of God and be in his presence one day. Hold my hand. Lord, we praise you. We worship you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. And the word is not enough, but thank you for what you've done. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that we already have a piece of, of the Lord inside of us. The glory is already inside of us, but one day we will stand face to face. One day we will stand in your presence and your glory. No doubt about it. Lord, I pray for those who have doubts that they that would be released in Jesus' name that today that they could trust you like they've never trusted you, that they would be released from trying to do it on their own, that they would just step into the grace of Jesus. We love you and we praise you and we give you all the glory. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Be strengthened, my friends. Study these scriptures, praise him, worship him. Go back and look at yesterday's. If you didn't see yesterday's, we talked about that living water and how we can get it and how we can praise and worship him in these hard desert places. So thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. We'll be on Psalm 63, 3 and 4 as we just slowly get through Psalm 63. Thank you for joining. Love y'all. Have a great day and go out there and be that threat to the enemy. Love you a lot. See you tomorrow. Bye.